Yo, yo, what is up, guys? Okay, so this is going to be the first episode of Studying Rappers. I don't know if we're going to call it that, but that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to study lyrics. We're going to break down, you know, the structure, um, the figurative, figurative language, and that's why we're studying figurative, figurative language at the same time. So we can, you know, kind of tie those together. Um, because they go hand in hand. They're, they're a deadly, deadly combo, guys. If you study, like, and I don't know any of this. I don't know. I'm, we're doing it together. I'm documenting the process. So it's going to be fun. We're going to learn together. We're going to do it together. We're going to do all this together. So we're going to um, maybe eventually move on to a better notepad than this. Because this notepad's a little, like, not what I, not exactly what I want. I'll probably, like, create a graphic or something that, that goes along with this, uh, this uh, series. But anyways, okay, so what we're going to do... I got a few songs pulled up. Um, we're gonna look at the lyrics and stuff, and I'm just gonna uh, break them down. But first, let's go over uh, the parts of a song. So I got it written out here. We're just gonna use our notepad, and you guys can do the same thing. Take notes. That's what I recommend, to be honest. And we're just gonna, uh, you know, go over this. I have this uh, little post right here. This blog post on a website, whatever this website is. And it's really good, it's really detailed on the parts of a song. So we can look down these and go along. So let's, this is the basics. This is episode one, the basics. So we're starting from the beginning. Okay, so the parts of a song. Now we got title, placement. And we're just going to use this as a rough draft, kind of. This, uh, this like blog post or whatever. And kind of like, um, break down the parts of a song, I guess. So we're just going to use this. Then we get the title placement. That's kind of, I mean, they're all kind of common sense things, but the title placement. Okay, so um, now let's see what this is telling us in the AAA song form, and we're going to figure out what that means, the lettering, and we're going to uh, go over all of that in this video. So, titles in the AAA song form, titles are placed either at the beginning or end of each verse. In the AABA, the title usually appears at the beginning or end in the a, of the A section in the verse, chorus, and verse, chorus, bridge song. The title often begins or ends the chorus. So, obviously not every song has it in the chorus like this. Tour, EXO Tour Life. There's no title in that song. Um, I don't even... Oh yeah, there is a, a Magnolia. In Magnolia, there is the word Magnolia, so they just say it. Like, title placement is not the biggest deal. But it let's let's make bullet let's make bullet points and list facts about it. So it can let's say it can or can't can't can can okay can or doesn't have to be used in the song. So you don't have to have a um you know, a title. This you don't have to have the title in the song, and if you do, that what this what this is saying is basically that it's in the beginning of a verse. Or the chorus. Or ends the chorus. So that's an effective way to wrap things up, and we're gonna kind of like see, um. We're going to go over, uh, let's go over this Eminem song and just break that down. Lose yourself. We're going to break it down and just see how the title goes. The, um, everything, everything in that song, um, we'll break it down the parts of that song. So let's move on to verse. Now in the verse, sorry, I'm still getting used to this notepad guys. So this is a brand new series. It's really brand new. We're just trying to do everything. We're going to learn along the way. We're going to go so, so deep into this. We're going to do 2018 songs, old songs, new songs, this and that. So, okay, so the verse. The verse. Now, let's make a quick description. The verse is the part of the song that tells a story. Sorry about my typing skills, guys. Okay, so now, obviously in rap, you don't have to necessarily tell a story. It could be, you know, a hard 16, you know what I mean? 
like a, hard, a good laid down 16 bars. Um, because in rap it's a little different. You could story tell in your verse. You could describe events. You could tell past um, occurrences or whatever, events, whatever. I don't think I spelled that right. I don't really care. Um, what else could we do? You could, um, what else could you do in your verse? That doesn't matter. You get the idea. And a refrain. So we basically get the idea of a verse. You know what I mean? Like, um, it could be 32 bars. It could be 16. It could be the whole song. Um, it gives listeners more insight leading to the main message of the song. It moves the story forward. So let's pretend we had verse one. Sorry to kind of go backwards here, but okay. So verse one begins a story. So you begin the story, right? In verse one, chorus, maybe, um, the plot, the setting of where it happened. Okay. And then you, um, talk about details in the story for verse two. So that would be verse two. Okay, so in verse 2, sorry guys, my bad. <clears throat> okay, I'm literally terrible at typing. But anyway, you talk about the details in the story. Now, maybe in, in verse 3, you, um, fuck, I need to get better at this. <laughs> okay, so. In verse 3, maybe you want to just throw, like, a left field, um, you know, throw a curveball, you know, something that's not expected, you know, like a, tw like a plot twist, and that'll juice, that'll make your song really juicy, so we're thinking of this as a storytelling song, so that's basically, like, we're going real deep in our verse. We're tr trying to get all the things that we could possibly talk about in our verse, you know? Like, um, there's so many things that, that you could talk about and really upgrade your bars. Um, and we're both learning together. That's the best part. So, let's talk about refrain. Now, the refrain, which can be easily confusing because it's so weird of a word and you never hear it and you only hear it right now refrain and what that basically is is like the chorus okay so but but it's not the chorus it's just a little bit different so let's talk about it right now the refrain is a line and it can be the title all right so now like um God's plan, like that song, God's plan, God's plan, yeah, God's plan, like that's a refrain, um, now they're trying to explain us, um, right here, let's take an example from, for the AA song form at the end of each verse of bridge over troubled water, the line, which also happens to be the title, like a bridge over troubled water is repeated, the refrain is different from the chorus, so, let's write, on a bullet point right here for the refrain, it's basically basically a repeated word or phrase. So chorus. Now this is the difference and you don't have to have all these elements in your song. So don't ever let that throw you off. You don't ever have to use any of these. You don't even have to have a chorus if you don't want. You can literally just rap through a song if you want. Um, okay, so in our chorus, the difference between this is that it. Um, let's see. Let's just uh, read the whole thing. Let's get the uh, let's get the feel for it. Okay, so the chorus is the part of the song that often sticks in the mind of the listeners. 
because it contrasts. I'm not going to write all that. So. The chorus is the part of the song that often sticks in the mind of a listener because it contrasts with the verse and it is repeated several times. The chorus is also the main theme. So, main theme. I know this is boring, but these are just the basics. And if you don't get the basics down, then you're never going to be get you're never going to go get the uh, advanced. And I'm literally doing it with you guys, so don't jump ahead and skip these. It's really really important to learn this. Because you'll know it, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that from back there. I remember when he did, oh yeah, man. And you can apply it, so that's really important. So the chorus is a part of the song that often sticks in the mind of the listeners. Um, now, <clears throat> it's the main theme, that's what I was trying to write. <laughs> is expressing a chorus, the title of the song is usually included. So title, usually included, and you can see why the refrain is so similar. The main theme is expressed in the chorus. Coming back to our salesperson analogy, think of the chorus as a slogan. The words that effectively summarizes why consumers should buy your product. So think of chorus as your song's slogan, pretty much. You know? Um... You know, it's kind of like a, let's see, so if you think of it as a slogan, you're kind of, you know, summarizing your verses, your verses to get a feel for the chorus. And that's, I guess, if you write your, your verses first. And I'm going to have videos on how to write good choruses. How to, we're going to come up with them ourselves, and we're going to study you know famous choruses so um, let's go over to pre-chorus so we get the idea of a chorus which is pretty simple now pre-chorus is a little bit cooler and it's kinda no okay so we can write climb and some people do call it that or climb which makes more sense calling it the climb now this is like um, if you've ever heard um, that song called that song called "We" by Jeremiah, he's like, "If we tried that, I can't sing. We could be somewhere in the climb. as warm. That's that's right there as the climb. And then he's like, "I swear that everything will be just fine. Yeah, I wish that we could take some time. After that, that's the chorus. So." As soon as, I mean, I guess that's not the best way to explain it. You have to listen to the song, but it's like the climb. So it's like, imagine four bars before the chorus, right before it. And you're like, you say, um, you could say anything. You could be like, okay, but maybe she wasn't the best thing, but, and then the chorus happens. Or, um, and then imagine you have it on both your verses at the end and it, and it correlates. So you have it at both of your end of your verses. So in verse one you have, so I love the but, and then it goes in the chorus, and then the next verse is like, and I try to love, but, and then it goes, so you like try to change it up, but it builds up and it, it makes that um, transition into the chorus. So it's not exactly the verse, but it's that in between point between the verse and the chorus. So let's call it, let's actually mark a bullet point down and call it the climb, because that's a simple explanation. Climb. It's literally the climb, the in between the verse and chorus that causes build up. And I'll, I'll demonstrate, or not demonstrate, but I'll, um, we'll, you know, try to explain how to cause that build up. So let's read this also known as the climb this part of the song different differs melodically and lyrically from the verse and comes before the chorus the reason why it's called the climb is that it heightens the anticipation of the listeners for the coming climax climax which is the chorus an example of a song with a climb is if you're ever in my arms again by whatever so we had once in a lifetime but i just couldn't see until it was gone blah blah blah, blah. so that's that climb and that song but i mean you have to listen to it really to get the feel for it so you could basically think of it as like a little intermission 
to build anticipation between the verse and the chorus. So we could actually um, let's go to let's go to bridge. Let's go over bridge, and now this is what bridge is. Um, the A sections can be whatever sections in this particular strong in A A B A. What we're trying to say is um, section A, section A, bridge, section A. So just imagine verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. So let's actually type that differently so we can actually understand it. Like, let's make up our own model. I don't really care about all that. So let's learn our own model. Let's go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. So in that model, when we explain it like that, it makes more sense to me. So I'm going to do that. The bridge B is musically and lyrically different from the A sections. In this form, the bridge gives the song contrast before transitioning to the final A section. Therefore, is a necessary part of the song. So the bridge. I think there's a bridge in Hotline Bling. Um, in Hotline Bling, there's a part where the whole the whole two verses where he's like, You used to call me on my... And whatever. And so on. And... Late night when you and uh, at the third verse it goes um, it goes you should so it it changes I forget how he does it it's like no it, you should you should call somebody else like his whole melody and his voice changes that's the bridge right there that's the bridge when it changes right there there's a lot of other songs I just don't have them listed out um, that have a bridge many songs do and I think it's a replacement. Let's think of it. Think of it as a replacement of the third verse. Okay? But it also also has to be a bit different from the rest of the song melodically and lyrically so that's like basically like if we're rapping like uh like the migos like like <laughs> whatever if you're rapping like that then you want to have a bridge that's like maybe like but, G, uh, 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 and then whatever you're saying, like, flip it, bricks, with a, hunter, bands, what a beat's going, whatever. Eh, G, in my kitchen, okay, whatever, that's me, and then they change it back up to the same flow, like the whole song. So that's the bridge, like that slow part, like, eh, G, whip it, then they go back to their fast parts, like, and I just been whipping it up. I just be tripping it up. I just be so that's the way you can get the idea of the bridge. That's definitely how that works. So we're studying it together, and it's really helping me. It's gonna help you. It's gonna help everyone. I hope this becomes a popular series. We're gonna study so deeply. This might be a long video, guys. We're gonna we're gonna dive into Eminem, lose yourself, and study that after we get this down right here. Or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just split that up. So depending on how long this goes so replacement think of it as a third verse also has to be a bit different from the rest of the song melodically and lyrically now in the verse chords chorus bridge song form however the bridge functions differently it's shorter than the verse and should offer a reason why the final chorus needs to be repeated it is also different melodically uh, melodically, lyrically, and rhythmically from the verse and chorus in the song just once recorded by James Ingram the bridge part begins with the line just once I want to understand so let's keep these categorized I'm not gonna space them let's keep them under the same um, you know uh, structure or the same category bridge or whatever let's call this bridge 2 um, because it's generally the same thing but in bridge 2 you're so it's the same same thing basically but 
in this bridge in this type of bridge I should say same thing but basically but in this type of bridge um, you want to change up no sorry okay so I functions diff sorry I just literally lost my uh, trying to thought it was shorter than the verse and should offer so that's what it is same thing basically but it the type of bridge offers a meaning for itself if that makes sense so the bridge will be the explaining or asking part or hmm let me think it should or a reasoning so it's basically the same but it's just a different style of presenting that bridge so let's move on we've covered bridge a lot let's coda I don't even know what this is I literally don't I've never heard of that so coda so let's look at this together um now it looks like that's the last part which is cool which is probably about all the parts of a song but I want to read this coda is an Italian word for tale it is the additional lines of a song which brings it to a close the coda is an optional adding to a song so um maybe like you can call it the outro for sure maybe a four bar change up from the song at the last couple bars or whatever at the outro so you can call this outro let's call this outro so actually let's break down Eminem's lose yourself so now I'm just gonna save this I think um, let me save this right here and we're gonna call this document um, if it'll let me save it I'm not really sure but that's basically the idea behind all this guys so like this is gonna be we're gonna uh, break these down in um, you know in uh, certain songs we're gonna go deeper and deeper into certain songs we're gonna uh, do full albums so um you know let's look at lose yourself while this does its thing over here I'm gonna try and save this document let's call this now if you're writing in a notepad let's do the same thing guys just save it as intro to um song rap to intro to uh studying lyrics studying rappers I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now so thank you guys for watching um but we're gonna go over this song real quick let's go over this song let's click on a website I'm gonna go on to genius rap genius and we're always gonna use that website for this um this particular series that way we can click on um, the definition and kind of see what everything's about so um, now whenever this is done saving which is I don't know why it's taking so long it's completely crazy um, Let's open a new one and let's see what we can do. I want to open up a new uh, document and I'm so stupid with this thing is that I don't know how to even do that. But okay, so we got the intro, we got the verse, we got the chorus, we got the verse two, we got the chorus and so on. And um, <clears throat> now let me open a new notepad. Um, See, I don't know why my computer is going crazy. It's really stupid. So I'm just going to, uh, I don't want to clear this. I want to open up a new one, I guess. So let's, um, Jesus Christ. Let me open up a new notepad, guys. Okay, so I've cleared this. And now let's kind of see, let's break this down. Now we got the intro. Now let me bold this. Now we got the intro. And... You know, let's break that down. Let's see what, what this song is all about. I'm not going to play it because we don't want to get copyrighted. But we're just going to look it over. If you want to play it, play it for yourself and listen to it. Um, you can get a feel for it. Now, um, 
let's study this. Let's put this into... Now, look. We could read it. If you have one shot or one opportunity. Now, he's just talking. Now, this is an intro where he's talking. So, let's write the song down while we're studying. Um, I literally hate this notepad, guys. Okay, so... Lose yourself. Now he's just talking in his verse, and it might be intro to song, um, an idea around the theme, um, what he's trying to say. So he's talking about the song. Now let's break down this verse. So now. This is the intro, and we didn't write that down for some reason, for some odd reason. Um, intro. Now, this is just bothering me. Okay, so he's just talking. You got the idea around the theme. Now, that's basically that for that. Now, we got the verse. Now, let's read what he's trying to say. Let's study this real quick. Let's see what's going on. His palms are sweaty, knees weak. We all know this song, guys. This is... His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms. Come on, I know y'all are listening to this right now, but I, I, uh, shout out if you are, though, no, for real. But these, these, uh, this is what we're trying to get to. We're trying to study it. Everyone knows this song, but how well do they know it? How did, they, how well do you know the verses, the structure behind it? And I think that really shapes up music. There's so many rappers out there that do not study the greats. You have to study the greats. You have to, you have to. You cannot. You can't not study the grades. That's just ridiculous. So, now let's get into this. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. So he's using, um, you know, quick rhymes, quick paced rhymes in the in in the beginning to catch interest so he's trying to catch your attention with those quick rhymes now he's nervous but on the surface he looks calm and ready now he's just you know kind of uh, explaining things he's kind of just going over he's kind of just uh, making things work he's just rapping and rhyming so he's just talking about himself but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down the whole crow's crow crowd goes so loud he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how everybody's joking now. The clock runs out. Time's up over Blau. So, we all know this song. He's talking about himself. He's talking about how, you know, he's talking about forgetting the words on stage. So, he's storytelling. So, he is storytelling. Now... Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, there's go gravity choked. He's so mad, but he won't give up that easy. He won't have it. Now, he's talking about storytelling, how he failed, but got back up, essentially. So, let's move on to the chorus now. Okay, so, let's talk about the chorus a little bit. This is where it's going to get a little more interesting and a little more, um, make a little more sense. So, in the chorus... Let's capitalize this really quick. Now, in the chorus, you better... Now, we're going to repeat. Now, we're going to see what it does. So, let's write some lyrics. You better lose yourself with the moment in the music. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. Okay, so you get that, you get that, blah, 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 so on. I'm not going to type it all out. Okay, so, and then let's see where it wraps up. So, and you better lose yourself, blah, 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 only to blow. In one shot, and this chance to blow, opportunity comes once in a lifetime. You, the oppor, so, the opportunity I don't know why I don't know how to spell that. comes once in a life okay so 
Now, that's the entrance and that's the ending. And then it wraps up twice. So it's going to go... Times two. Okay? So... Now you better lose... So this is the theme. You better lose yourself. And like we said, this is the title. And look what we, look what we said about our last notes. It's in the first part of the chorus so it's called lose yourself and it, there is our title so it makes sense the song so it relates to the title and the chorus so in the music the moment so he's talking about getting lost in the music so that's what the the lose yourself means so losing yourself in the moment the music the opportunity comes a lot once in a lifetime so that's like a dramatic um, sentence pretty much saying it only comes once in a lifetime you know like to declare it kind of so that's literally our verse our chorus so that's gonna be our chorus and I think we should actually copy this and um, if we can copy it and let's just paste it times two um, this notepad really sucks, guys. <laughs> We're going to get a new one. And um, so that's our whole entire verse. Um, so, or a chorus, I'm sorry. That's our whole chorus. Now, that's pretty, like, simple when you come to think of it. When you go and study it, it's pretty simple. And then, so, we didn't really get to study um, exactly whatever, all of what happened in here. So, um, and I don't think we need to, but we could read it. His palms are weak, blah, blah, blah. He's talking about being on stage, and he, and he writes, and he, uh, bombs it. Forgot what he wrote down. Everyone's, you know, whatever. He's, he's trying to snap back to reality. Blah, blah, blah. Go back. Won't give up easy. No, he's broke. He's stagnant. He won't go back. And then this whole Rhapsody better go capture this moment. So he's trying to just get better at not being so in this in this uh messed up world he was in so he's trying to get out of it he's trying to lose himself in the music his soul's escaping through the hole so he's he's continuing his verse so verse two so in verse two he continues the story of and eminem's a great storyteller the one of the best he continues so he's the whole world is mine now he's talking about let me make this bullet points. Continues a story. Now he's talk talking about the side where he made it, essentially. So whatever. And there's the third verse. So we got the chorus, and then it wraps up into the chorus. So. Okay, so we got the chorus. We can just copy and paste this. Now, what is this helping us do? It's helping us get the idea of songs. And if you don't, then you're not going to get them. And you could do it yourself. Of course you could. But um, when you study what's already done and already written, it gives you an uh, idea of, you know, right now. Like, you need to adapt to the times of now, like in 2018. You need to get with uh, the trends and the cultures of now. That's why you can't just go start um, rapping and become the next big thing. You might as well just jump on the bandwagon. Not mine as well, but you should to get um, publicity up at first, I think, at least, to get your name out there in the beginning. Like, if you want to become, you should be, you should, you should follow the trend at first to try and get noticed. Then you can go sprout and do whatever you want when you have an when you have an audience, but um. Okay, so three, no, uh, verse three. So in verse three, let's see what he does. So now we didn't go too deep in these verses, and we're not trying to because we want to make our own verses, but we still want to get the idea of what he's doing. So he's telling he's telling a story, and no more games. I'm trying to I'll change what you call rage. Tears, blah blah. blah. I was playing beginning the mood all change. I was chewed up. So he's talking about, you know, um, 
the pain, the struggle of it. So he's highlighting, I think at least, um, that it don't matter what we think about it. We could think whatever we want. I'm sure it's subjective every way, like what he's saying. But basically, he's highlighting the rough parts in his story to bring it authenticity and feeling now maybe he didn't mean to do that whatever maybe he just raps like that but that's what we're writing down we're trying to decode this guys we're trying to get into this and do it for ourselves the whole reason behind this is so we can apply it to our method back in FL studio and get the hang of this so highlighting the rough parts and his story to bring in authenticity authenticity and feeling then um, you know, so on and so on, and then we got the chorus. So, let's, um, we're not gonna copy and paste that, but we got, let's go and add a notes section. So, let's write bullet points down about this song. And, um, when we go ahead and apply it to our song, then we can, you know, uh, get a feel for it a little better. We can get song structure down a bit better, um, than what we had it, so... Let's go into notes. Now, what I'm going to do is just write some notes down of what I think about this song. So, it's obviously in... Let's see how the structure is. It goes... Let's mark it. Let's go... Let's type in structure. You know what? Let's go structure. Um, Intro for I. So, we got I. Intro, verse, chorus, verse. So, intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. So that's literally the song, and then, um, I think it might, no, you know what, and then it goes into an outro. So, that is our structure right there. Intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. So there's three of each. That's exactly how this is working. I think we should space these out, or use like a dash. Okay. So, that's our structure. Now... Um, now that gets you, um, thinking about how you can structure your songs and not everyone's the same. We're going to go into so many songs guys. So keep watching. Um, anyways, now let's write some more notes about it. Um, it's a storytelling song. So he's telling a story. I don't know why I typed it in twice. I must be out of my mind. Um, so he's telling a story. Um, he's got, let's see, if you listen to the song, it's quite, it's kind of got that hustle feel that I n need to make it feel. Um, that's the mood. So the mood is giving off that. Um, let's see what else we can kind of pull from this. Like, um, let's see. He's talking about his life. So that's important. He's talking about his life because it is his song. It's pretty important. Um, it's got, it's got straight to the point chorus lyrics. As in... It gets straight to the point. It tells you exactly what he's trying to say and how he wants to say it. And that's important. You don't want to, like, uh, linger off. Now, I think that's pretty much the whole entire feel of this song. I think that's much about it. So, we got... It's a storytelling song, you know. We got the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. We got the outro. And then so on. Now, if we go ahead and apply that to our songs, what does that mean for us? I mean, that means we can go ahead... What does it mean? Let's add that for, uh, section. What's in it for us? Um, you know, we get to see how... What's in it for us? We get to see how this is structured. We get to see how he story tells. We get to understand how this works. So, I mean, it's pretty much it, guys. This is pretty much it for the this video. Um, this was the, you know, studying rap lyrics part, or episode one. We're gonna go so deep into all these. We're gonna go over so many different ones, guys. So, thank you for watching. Um, 
you can kind of get the idea of this. So if you go ahead and listen to the song and all that, then um, so on. We can we can definitely deep uh, dive deeper and deeper into this. But there's other songs that have a little better structure and different structure, and that's the whole idea is to get so many different ones um, piled up into each other. So thank you for watching, guys. This has been episode one of studying rappers now we're gonna take this to a new high of all time because right now we're only just you know beginning and stuff and we're just we're just figuring out everything and trying to get uh, a flow for this so we're gonna have more structured notes and everything but thank you for watching this has been the first episode of studying rappers peace guys thank you